And some housekeeping, the session is being recorded as of now, and I will be sharing it via YouTube at a later date. Uh, my handle on YouTube is just Ellie Pilcher, and I do share all of my links via Twitter as well. So if you follow me on Twitter, you'll get a link. If you have any questions after or even during the session, if you have to drop out because you have dinner or the, the doorbell rings, or the phone rings, it's absolutely fine. Drop me a line on Twitter, Instagram, or via my email. You will have my email from signing up to Eventbrite, so just reply to any of the messages you got today and I will receive your message. And then to keep up to date with the latest market or marketing events, you can follow me on any of the accounts I've already mentioned or via my newsletter, which I send out monthly. And uh, yeah, that's how I do it. I am considering potentially starting a separate Twitter account specifically for market your marketing, as I am doing at least one session a month currently, but I am waiting to see how lockdown goes with that because uh, <laughs> burnout is real, people. So in this session, you will learn, and uh, this is really, really simple, but you are gonna learn how to reach out to people and start conversations, be it your peers, be it publishing hopefuls, be it publishing professionals, or just any other industry. Also, you will receive resources. This is specific to the publishing industry, so the resources I am gonna share, uh, particularly links to Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, are for the publishing professionals, but can be also used for authors, for example. But uh, yep, they're also a great place to kind of start, particularly if you're looking into marketing or if you're interested in sales or interested in rights, be it in publishing or not, these people will still have some insight. So those are the resources we will be, I will be sharing. And then finally, there'll be some ideas on how to develop your network once you begin. From personal experience, I am not a fan of networking, particularly when I was first starting out. It took me about three years probably to kind of get it down pat and know what my comfort levels were and understand how to network effectively. But the thing that I was very happy to learn when I came into publishing is that it is a exceedingly social industry. Um, it ties into what I was about to say actually about how it being, it's very small. Everyone in publishing kind of seems to know everyone else or at least knows of someone else. It's uh, not so much seven degrees of separation, more two or three at max. Uh, we are also very social. There's a lot of events that normally run when we're out of lockdown anyway, such as things like the Borough Book Bash, which is a monthly gathering of people in London Bridge for a drink, completely free to attend. You show up if you wanna show up, you have a drink with your fellow publishers, you have a natter, you have a moan, you just meet new people, you network, and that's run by Sam Missingham. So currently that's not running, but that's just an example. There are also launch events, which run via books, uh, bookstores even. Waterstones have run them, independents run them, authors run them, publishers run them. You have showcases, which bloggers, reviewers, Anyone really with an interest in books can attend and basically publishes like any excuse to have a drink. So come Christmas time, you will find us in the pub. But um, during lockdown, it's been different. It's been difficult as well, but we are starting to see uh, an, an abundance of these events starting to come through. Not so much launch events and festivals, which were happening during the summer portion of lockdown, but now we're starting to see more social events, more workshops such as these, more of these uh, pros for pros networking sessions, a chance to kind of meet people. And I think more mentorship schemes and kind of the spare Zoom project, for example, are starting to come into play as well. So with that in mind, um, really don't think of publishing or networking as like a scary thing. Think of it more as a socialization thing. It's, <laughs> it's hard to explain exactly, but it's, it is a social experience and socialization should be fun. So never think of it as scary if you can help it. And then one of the points I kind of wanted to share is that creative industries, not just publishing, but journalism, arts, media, um, there is a slight nepotism, or at least there was. I think publishing is starting to come out of it. There is less of the, um, it's not who you know, it's, what, uh, it's not what you know, it's who you know, that is starting to kind of recede as time goes on, particularly with uh, larger companies where HR is involved. But there is still a sense of, it's not who what you know is who you know so networking is still very very key I'm not saying that if you don't have a network you can't get a job because that is 100% not true at all you can get a job with or without a network but the more people you know the more comfortable you are the easier I would say it is to get into this um, into this industry or any industry that is creative and like I said networks are really are kind of crucial not just for meeting people not just for that kind of nepotism element but also for your self-confidence for your socialization um, I was a very lonely person when I moved to London and started out in publishing because I didn't have a network so now I have a huge network in publishing which is great it's why I encourage people to go to these events to talk to each other not just the, um, the person running them or creating them uh, but yeah but it is it's very easy to kind of slip into that particularly in lockdown at the minute so it's key, it's not just for 
networking for your job it's for your mental support it's for mentorship it's for skill development it's a way to ease off the boredom of lockdown so yeah so networking is very important these are some of the resources I was talking about which are very specific to publishing so for anyone here that isn't here necessarily for the publishing industry I apologize this might not be so relevant to you but for the people that are in publishing or are looking to get into publishing or just a little bit intrigued by the industry uh, these are some recommendations for groups and people individuals to follow so on Twitter, your kind of main groups you will see are the SYP, which is the Society of Young Publishers. I put the SYP UK here, but there's also uh, SYP London, SYP Oxford, SYP North. And I do believe there's one now in the Southwest. But I can't remember off the top of my head, but I will find out and share. But there are lots of um, Society of Young Publishers spread now all across the country, and they are a brilliant source uh, for publishing hopefuls, for young publishers, as the name suggests. Pub interns and uh, that pub blogger are brilliant little community run Twitter accounts that share jobs, that share latest publishing news that really is about community. It's just a, a support kind of Twitter account. They also do some really um, good, they share mentorship schemes, they share events, they share insights, blog posts, YouTube. They're really supportive as well. So definitely go check them out. Publishing Post, which is run by Chelsea Graham, who was a guest uh, on my side hustle panel last workshop, so two weeks ago. Uh, she runs the Publishing Post, which is a bi-weekly or bi-monthly, I never get that right, uh, it's a newsletter, it's a magazine even, that goes to your inbox. Really great. If you haven't subscribed and you're interested in publishing, definitely do. But again, it's a magazine that's kind of, is put together by someone, a publishing hopeful, someone that doesn't work in publishing, and it's all the contributors. There's about 80, I think. Um, so it's a great place to network as well as to develop and learn and grow your insights. But Machine is a uh, company for people that are exec level and above. Um, so you have marketing or example, marketing assistants and marketing exec. So it's like the second job up and it's all about upskilling, but they also run some great social events. So definitely check those out. The Spare Room Project is a really interesting one. So for anyone that isn't based near or lives in London, but wants to work in the publishing industry, unfortunately publishing is very, is 80% centred in London. So if you're ever interested uh, and you haven't got the resources to come and stay or to do an internship or a short work experience, Spare Room Project are actually a charity or an organisation, charitable organisation that uh, puts you in a spare room of a publishing professional for the two weeks or however long your work experience is so it's a great system but they're also doing the spare zoom project at the minute um, which is a networking session and again great to sign up i do think it's via the spare room project twitter account though so but if you can look into the spare zoom project you have a chance to get some one-on-one -on -one time with publishing professionals that donate their time to talk to you about all of that and then pros for pros is a new or relatively new um group that have started similar workshops to this they've just won, run an event on networking specifically I'm sure they'll be running lots of events very soon and then Facebook so publishing hopefuls I'm sorry I'm going through these one by one I will kind of skip a few in a minute uh, but the publishing hopefuls is a, a community it is a brilliant brilliant community if you're not a part of it if you are a publishing hopeful do go sign up now they are lovely they are just there for support to kind of help you when you're down to chat to talk about advice to share your cv they're really lovely christina runs it she's great she's on instagram as well so go check out her um, account when you can it's just a great place to network with your future peers and that's how i want to think about it i don't want to think of it as a uh, people that you're trying to get you're beating out of a job you know they get a job that you don't get a job it's not like that it's not cutthroat it is a community these are your peers these are the future of publishing get to know them now it'll save you a lot of time later uh, again, Society of Young Publishers, they've also got Facebook and Instagram. And then there's one more chapter of books, which is actually a publisher. It's a HarperCollins publisher. And, but they run several Facebook accounts for book clubs and read-alongs and their blogger reviewers accounts and things like that. And they, again, they think of themselves less as an imprint and more of a community. So it's a great way to kind of network and outreach to authors as well as to publishers because it's not just publishers that you want to network with when you're trying to get into the creative industry it's also the authors it's also the people on the periphery periphery even and i'll get to them in a minute book careers is a sort of freelance hr 
run by the amazing Suzanne Collier. Um, again, a brilliant support place. If you ever have any questions, if you've ever thought you've been mistreated um, or your contract is slightly odd and you want someone to check it out for you, then go to Suzanne. She's great at advice, she's great at support and uh, she'll be there for you on that. And then other groups are publishing freelancers, publishing portfolios, those that have, uh, are freelance editorial, for example, or freelance marketeers that want to get their work shared and to discuss freelancing in publishing, not just working in publishing per se. You then have all your Instagram accounts, and these are pretty much everyone I've already mentioned, but the few that I will mention again. So Flam Flam is Flavia, who runs the uh, podcast Publishing Insights, which is an, uh, an interview podcast where you can listen to publishing professionals telling their story about how they got into publishing, their skills, what they recommend, their tips, and things like that. Tandem Collective is actually... Uh, what I would rec think of as like a marketing agency. So they put bloggers and reviewers in the path of publishers and say, we can run a read along for you. We can start a book club for you. We can do a showcase for you. And again, it's a great place to network because you're not only meeting fellow uh, book bloggers or book reviewers or people that just enjoy books. You're also meeting publishers one-on-one. -on -one. You're helping them out. It's another, it's another in for want of a better word. It's not just, hi, I'm so-and-so. Can you read my CV? It's also, hi. I love your books. If you'd ever want me to review them for you, I'd like that. You're getting your face in front of them. You're getting your name in front of them. And that's all networking. You've got some additional ones. So Book Marketing Society is, uh, as it suggests, a society. It's almost like the union of uh, book marketeers. And there's also the Publishers Publicity Circle, which is the union for publicity. And uh, it's another separate group. But if you're specifically interested in book marketing, then the Book Marketing Society run a mentorship scheme. They run events, they run a uh, task force, and they run YouTube, they share YouTube videos and things like that. It's all about upskilling. So if you're specifically interested in rights or editorial or publicity or marketing, you will find these kind of little societies within the industry, which you can then network with in particular, because they will put you in the path of the people that you are likely to work with or who are likely to hire you when they have jobs available. So definitely check those ones, those out as well. And then I think the only other two on there, you've got Prod Squad Books, which is Robin. She works at HarperCollins. She's a uh, production controller. She is amazing. If you have any interest in production, go to Robin. She's fantastic. And her bookstagram account is mm, chef's kiss amazing. So there we go. After mentioning various accounts, companies, unions, ideas, things like that, I wanted to just highlight a few particular people that are already, already mentors even uh, and spokespeople within the publishing industry. So some of these names are probably highly recognisable to you. For example, Ain was on the, um, the workshop last week, or last workshop even, to talk about side hustlers, as was Chelsea Graham. So Ain works at events, she has a YouTube channel, she has a blog, she does Instagram stories, she interviews people in publishing, she shares her insights. Really, really great if you have any questions or want inspiration or just an idea of how publishing works, go to Ain. Uh, Eleanor Marie Rose is actually, I believe, an apprentice at Bloomsbury, and uh, she has a YouTube series where she interviews publishing professionals, and I believe I've, I've done one with her, and I think it comes out in April, so she has a lot of content coming, um, but she runs a, she has a brilliant YouTube channel, and that is her handle. I think these are all Twitter handles, but most of the time they kind of are the same on Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, etc. Uh, Phoebe Morgan is editorial director at HarperCollins Crime. She's my previous boss. She's also an author herself. She also has a blog. Again, very vocal, absolutely lovely. If you have any questions or want to learn more about the industry, about as an author in particular, I would recommend going to Phoebe, particularly her blog. She shares like things like her cover letter. Uh, her query letter to agents, what contracts are like, what it's like working with authors, all of that, as well as her own insights into the publishing industry. Chelsea Graham does the publishing post and is wonderful, so definitely go check her out. Tanu used to work, uh, I think, I say used to work, I think she's only just left the Society of Young Publishers Committee, that's the word, um, but she is amazing. She's absolutely, oh, I love her to bits. So definitely go check out Tanu. She's extremely supportive and she has experience at SYP, so she knows exactly how to network and to help you network. Laura Summers runs Book Machine. Again, absolutely stunning lady, and uh, she does amazing content on Instagram. If you have any questions, particularly about upskilling in general, particularly when it comes to production, rights, marketing, sales, Laura's your girl. 
Sam at Lounge is Sam Missingham, who is the most connected woman in publishing. Uh, that's not even me exaggerating. That's a, a genuine fact. I think she has something like 50,000 followers uh, within the publishing industry. Everyone knows her. She also runs, runs Lounge Books. She's very connected. If you want to start networking, start with Sam because she knows everyone. As simple as that. Amy Dewar works at uh, Book Machine. She's also a freelancer uh, and she's lovely as well. I put her on here because she and I networked. We met by networking. She came to an event that I was doing and she came up to me and asked to chat. And then um, a few months later, I asked for her to come out for a coffee because I was thinking at the time of going freelance and she was freelance. So uh, we ended up having a coffee for an hour discussing freelancing. And that's, that's how we met. That's how we're mates. So that's an example of networking. It's as easy as that. Uh, Claire Fenby, the lovely Claire, who also works at HarperCollins. <laughs> Everyone I know works at HarperCollins these days. Uh, she was also on a panel a few months ago now, and uh, she has a YouTube channel and, and a gorgeous bookstagram. Honestly, I'm so jealous of her Instagram. And she's also extremely lovely and supportive, so definitely check her out. Chloe and Emma actually run Pub Interns, the Twitter group I was talking about that share insights and jobs and advice and things like that on Twitter. So they're brilliant. Flam Flam is Flavia. Uh, Elba, or E-L-B-R, is L. Brenton Rounding, who is the new SYP chair for London. So again, brilliant person because she will be connected to everyone that considers themselves a young publisher. She will also be running events and running the SYP this year. So a great person to follow and to network with. And then, like I said, Suzanne Collier, who runs Book Careers and is extremely helpful with advice and ideas and support. Okay, so we kind of got through the resources section of this bit. So I'll actually talk less now about people and more about the how to implement and how to start and strategize, create a networking a network. So this will be for the people that aren't necessarily looking to get into publishing, um, but are looking to get into a creative industry or to just work on their networking skills in general. So these are my three top tips. Right, so these are fairly self-explanatory to begin with, but I will break them down. But the first one is very obviously, it's reaching out. You know, they know that the old adage is that the phone works both ways, but initially when you're starting out, the phone only works one way and it's from you to someone else. Uh, you start now, you start developing your network now. Within a month, two months, a year, three years, whatever it may be, people will then start coming to you because you will have grown your network so much that people will recommend that they come to you to learn or because they think you're great that's how a network works um, but initially you will have to be the person to reach out you cannot wait for someone to come to you the second thing is to attend events as much as you can to get your face out there to get your name out there and to always go in with this kind of rule in your head that you cannot leave until you said hello to one person that was a rule I used to set myself when I was going to physical events when I used to really get nervous and get very shy because I am an introvert at heart believe it or not and um, I used to set myself a rule I cannot leave until I say hello to at least one person and you'll be surprised how just that one person can then just spiral into conversations with a load of other people to being introduced to people to getting you comfortable in the day to actually properly spread your ring wings to properly network so always if you do attend events be it virtual be it physical always say hello to at least one person and the third point is to be vocal online, if not in person, but to really build your, idea, build your personal brand or this idea of a personal brand, to get your name out there, to get your face out there, to make sure that whatever you're doing, you're sustaining your networks, even when you're not emailing people or asking for their advice on a, in a DM or posting even, that there's already some content there that people slip back and go, oh, I really like that person's Bookstagram account. I might get in touch if they're interested in working with us or, they previously messaged me and I forgot to get, get back to them, but actually now I'm seeing they've got this, they've start, they joined the SYP. Hmm, that'd be an interesting person, you know. It, it kind of works in your favor. So even like the background stuff as well as the full front stuff. So to break this out a bit more, to start with, we're going to talk about reaching out via email and DM. So I always laugh when I put reaching out via DM because it does sound a bit like I'm asking people to slide into each other's DMs. Um, but currently, and given the situation we're in, that is pretty much what you need to do. You do need to reach out by email and via DMs. And uh, you can do this for many reasons. If you need an excuse to do it, it can be so you can ask someone for their advice on your cover letter, on your CV, about a job interview. Um, if you've seen that somebody previously worked in the position that you're going for or previously worked at the company or even currently work at the company you're going for a job interview for, reach out to them and say, so what's it like? 
what's the dress code <laughs> you know I mean that's not so apparent now but that's what I used to do when I started down publishing. I used to always message someone at a similar level to me, so at the time assistance, and just say, what's it like working there? What's kind of the nine to five? Is there anyone I should look out for? Are there any rules I should stick to that you know, may, might not be obvious at first? And it's just a way of breaking the ice and it's really easy to break the ice then over Twitter because when you get to do your work on the first day or even to the interview, you already know there's already a friendly face there and they can start a conversation with you, which then allows you to easily network with someone else. So, um, but yeah, but you can also, like I say, reach out and ask for advice in general. I know that a lot of people come to me and say, can you read your, can I read their CV? Um, I always try and say yes, but sometimes depending on workloads, because reading CV can take a while, particularly if you're doing it well, if, if you're doing it detailed and really going through line by line, checking the spelling, layout, anything like that, it can take time. So sometimes you might get a no response or you might get, I'm sorry, I can't do it now. But the fact you reached out, you're still networked. Simple as that. The other thing you can do is to ask for mentorship. So I run, I am a mentor. I go through the Book Marketing Society and SYP and societies in general just to make sure that I'm one, not taking on too many mentees at once because I don't want to spread myself so thin that I'm not relevant to anybody. Um, but also I think running them on my own, it'd be a lot harder to maintain. But you can ask people for mentorship. I think people, particularly in the kind of the mid-level of publishing, it's the sort of thing they would love because publishing this kind of unspoken rule that to teach is to learn. So I mean, I, I definitely find that. That's part of the reason why I love to mentor is that the more and the why I love to do these workshops because the more that I teach people, the more that I learn in return. It's kind of it, you're passing knowledge back and forth to each other. So yeah, but you can definitely reach out and say, would you be? Um, I'm looking for a mentor. I'm really intrigued by your career or I think you'd be a brilliant person to learn from or I saw recently that you got promoted and you know I aspire to be you it can be anything really and I have a mentor as well I'm not just a mentee or a mentor myself even I am a mentee as well and I got that my mentorship by asking I was like I think I really want to develop my skills in this area and I'm not getting that in my position currently so can I reach out to this person at this other company to develop that certain set of skills so you can definitely do that. So you can ask about a person's career. So you can say congratulations on a new job or a career milestone. You can message them saying, I recently saw you got promoted. Um, can I ask what was your kind of career into this? What's, where does your experience lie? How did you get your first job in publishing? Which works on any level across any industry. You know, Can I ask how you got your first job as a lawyer? Can I, can I ask where you started out as a doctor? What university did you go to? Um, I'm just thinking of these big authors and big authors, big careers even. But it, it works across any career. And for publishing, it's the same. People, people often like to talk about their origin story in publishing and to, um, <laughs> to moan about how little we were paid or not paid at all. So uh, definitely always feel free to query about someone's career. The other thing to do is to reach out to your fellow peers. So your publishing hopefuls, your other assistants, uh, your other people in creative industry, not necessarily publishing. I also reach out to journalists. I also reach out to university students um, because I think that they're still in those formative years and they are learning things that I won't learn. So, you know, I'm always happy to talk to people that are in communications, journalism, art, design, on Skillshare, I tend to watch those lessons and I reach out to the person that ran them. You know, it's all of these people you can ask for, but particularly if you're starting out in publishing, reach out to your fellow publishing hopefuls because like I said before, they are going to be your colleagues in a few years time and publishing is so small. It is a bit un <laughs> incestuous, a bit, it's the wrong word, but you know, it is, everyone knows everybody. So get to know them now, make those connections now and support each other because it'll make it so much easier. You know, I think there's that old phrase, um, be nice to the people on the way up because you don't know who you'll meet on the way down. Not to say that anyone will ever come on the way down, but it's a good life lesson to kind of stick to. And then finally, say hello. At the minute, we're all in lockdown. We're all bored out of our minds. I think all of my colleagues have like moved their furniture around the flat because they're that bored. So making these new connections and socializing with other people is a really great plus and we are looking for it. So definitely at the minute, it's the perfect time to network. I was wondering if I should include events in this because currently events aren't really ongoing. But like I said, virtual events 
are coming up again. Um, we had the summer, summer festivals, there was a ton of them. And then I think we all got Zoom fatigue. So over Christmas period, um, we didn't really do them as much, but they are starting to come back. And there are social events coming back. There are launch events. Authors are running events. Authors are running kind of one-on-one -on -one chats, panels. I'm running these workshops, pros for pros is networking. You know, these events are coming. So, or coming back even. So make sure you are attending them as many as you can, or at least the ones that are relevant to you and you think you'll get something out of. And like I said, set that rule to always say hello to one person, be it saying hello to the creator or the person that run it or the team that ran it um, by saying thank you afterwards. That's your networking there. You're, you're signing off, you're putting a name to a face. But also if they say, like I did at the beginning of this chat, put your details in the chat box, then do it. It's, it's a great way to network. Like I said, I'm going to follow every single person that has put their handles into the chat box tonight. And I wouldn't, I can't do that if you don't put them there. So make sure you do that. So make sure you definitely do that. And um, if you also, if the video function, I know that I've, uh, many people here have turned their cameras off and that's purely, I, I do that mostly because I record. So I always think it's a bit privacy otherwise, uh, privacy breaking rules otherwise. So, um, but yeah, but if you can, if you go to events and they say, please turn your camera on, then try. I know it's uncomfortable. I, I had struggled with this. If I don't have full face of makeup on and my hair's done nice or I'm not in a well-lit room, even though this is not well-lit, then you know I, I struggle to put my camera on. But if they ask you to and it will help you to network, then do it. It's, it really is as easy as click of a button. Okay. So, and like I said, follow up, following up with people is a really big thing after events. It's the easiest way to kind of get into your comfort zone because when you're at an event, when there's a hundred people there, be it online or be it in person, it can be very daunting and it can be very hard to, to go up to someone and start a meaning, meaningful conversation, to follow them on Instagram or to say, can I follow you on Instagram without feeling weird? So with that in mind, always follow up after the event if that makes it easier for you, particularly when you're starting out. So saying thank you for the event, saying, oh, I attended this event tonight, it was X, Y, Z. Um, if you attended tonight, follow me so we can have a chat about it. You know, that's all of that is relevant and is developing your networking and your network even. And it's a great way to look professional, to look open, to look kind, also to look invested. And I'm gonna keep saying it, put a name or a face to someone that attended. And then finally, this is something I noticed um, last week after the Pros for Pros events. Uh, all these professionals, publishing professionals were saying, DM me if you have any questions, message me, email me, tweet me, Instagram me, any of it. And I spoke to, a lot of my colleagues did that event and I spoke to them afterwards and none of them got any messages or follow-ups or anything like that. And I'm thinking there must have been, people must have had questions because they went to that event in the hopes to get their questions answered. So why didn't they follow up? You know, so if a publishing professional says that, that they are open to DMs or an email or a tweet or an Instagram, take them up on it because they are really being honest. We do not say that lightly. If we don't have time, we will tell you. And so if they say it on a public forum that they are welcome to, they're happy to answer emails, to answer questions, to talk one-on-one, -on -one, to have a Zoom chat, to have a coffee, take them up on it. Honestly, no one offers that just as like a being polite thing. It, it's true. Following up, so is this about being vocal online? So this is kind of starting your own network, developing your network when you're not there. If you need a break, if you know you need a screen break, you've got burnout, something personal is going on, any of that. If you're being vocal online, then your, your online presence will do the work for you for a shorter period of time. So you can have a break or you can rest or anything like that. But it's also putting a face to a name. And it's a great way to kind of meet new people and to keep that network churning constantly and to, you know, keep it going. So in this way, you can, I've put some suggestions here of how you can start your own network um, in a more creative way. And particularly during lockdown, I know a few people are furloughed. I know a few people are bored out of their minds. Um, if you're a student, then I imagine that graduation, uh, graduation, university right now is a bit quieter than normal because you can't go out afterwards and see your friends or do your work experience or things like that. So if you can't find a relevant workshop online or an event online even, start your own. So I've just put some examples. You can start a weekly Twitter chat, create a hashtag, say at 8 p.m. every Tuesday, I am gonna have a chat for an hour about all things publishing or all things books or all things anything, comic books, design, that latest TV trend, anything. Um, you could also do a Zoom event like this. This, was, this is entirely set up by me. I just put out a Twitter post saying, I'm going to run this event. Here's a link, register for free if you want to attend. 
I mean, there are 60 plus people. So, um, I mean, just this event alone, but I mean, the first one I had over 800 people. So it's, it's as easy as that. And then finally a mentorship scheme. So I, like I said, I go through unions and groups rather than start, rather than mentor on my own. So sometimes you can network and develop your network by actually starting a scheme if that makes sense. So if you start, then you become the hub, you can become the person that has to find the mentees, find the mentors. And so you grow your network quite a lot because you have multiple people coming at you. So you can start a mentorship scheme. Uh, the other thing is to tweet, to comment, to, like I said, jump to people's DMs, to ask questions, to ask for advice, to get your presence out there, to be known, to be, be vocal and to be approachable as well. And there's so many things you can do. It'd be on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, email, LinkedIn, all of that just go for it just get yourself out there get yourself known say hello to people be nice be social make sure you follow up on those events like i said if you do anything and you think it's relevant tag a group like pub interns or that pub blogger or publishing post if you set up an event of your own which you want them to feature or if you have a question and don't know who to ask then tag a load of people in a tweet or instagram or something like that so you reach different people and get different insights and different opinions it's all it's all a way of networking and it's asking questions really is a pivotal point to networking it's how we start conversations it's that yes and element to a conversation so if you've um, set yourself that rule of i must speak to at least one person tonight and then uh, then you say um yeah that's great to know the conversation can't can't go anywhere so you need to say something like that's great to know and uh, how did you get into publishing or you know thanks for talking to me what movie are you watching right now it doesn't have to be relevant to a job but you need to always do that kind of yes and element so ask a question be conversational don't just let the conversation end you're driving it you're networking so drive your network and make sure you ask those questions so yeah so going back to that moment I said about starting your own network so if you have time at the minute if you're looking to start a side hustle again very big on side hustles um, and or you just want to kind of develop your network in a creative way which you can then show off in a job interview on a CV here are some creative ways I've seen people creating their own network recently particularly in lockdown um, so for example Ayn myself and Eleanor Ree Rose Phoebe we all have a blog series of interviews and sharing our interviews, uh, interviews in, yeah, sharing our insights even into the publishing industry. So I regularly post about my day in the life and my job interview tips and things like that. But other people also do Q and A's. Uh, they do, I think Ayn did a really great series recently about rejection, about her, the jobs that she applied for, but she didn't get. And that's just really insightful because she's thinking, why didn't you get them? It's, if you've ever been rejected, it's a great one to watch. I think that's a YouTube actually, not a blog, but still very relevant. The other thing you can do is a YouTube channel. So Ellen Marie Rose, like I said, she has her amazing uh, series of YouTube videos, but there's also people like Lena Norms, Sana at Books and Quills, people that have previously worked in publishing or currently work in publishing that have these big YouTube, YouTube presence. So Claire Fenby, uh, Jen, uh, Jen at Jen's Bookish Thoughts, all of these people that have worked in publishing. They, there's so many resources on YouTube, so much insight, day in the life. I mean, Avon, where I work, we have our own YouTube channel. Um, I mean, ours is mostly for our authors, but there's a, a video on there, I think from six years ago, um, talking about the process of a book. And again, you can comment on those videos. You can, everything this day, everything on social media is social. So everything you do, you can network. So utilize it. Start a blog series, start a YouTube channel, uh, reach out to publishers to ask for their advice on how to do so, or to ask them to take part. You know, just say, do you have five minutes to answer these five questions? Most of them will say yes, if not all. So, you know, it's a great way to network. Another thing is a podcast series. So podcasts are growing. There are a lot of work, but they are growing in popularity. Emma Ronan at the Slumbering Softcast and Flavia at Publishing Insights run two specific publishing podcasts, which are great, and they specifically interview people. Um, not only can you listen to these to grow insights and then reach out to the people that took part in the publishing series, but also you can reach out to Emma and to reach out to Flavia and offer yourself as a guest and say, hi, I have these experiences or hi, I'd love to be a guest or I'd love to help you with promoting this. You know, reach out to the creators, even just say, I love your content. Immediately you've networked. You can create an event online 
hello <laughs> this is the creation of an event online and i'm meeting so many amazing amazing people and like i said i'm going to be following all of you so my network is going to grow by like 60 people today which is amazing and you don't all have to follow me but it you know if you want to the whole point of this is to network after all but it's i'm looking forward to seeing your content and to learning and watching your careers and seeing how where you choose to go in your degrees whether that be in marketing and publishing or if you go into rights or if you just develop your network and become a doctor or a lawyer i mean i don't think a communications degree is going to help with becoming a doctor but you never know you never know so i've also mentioned doing the weekly or monthly chat you can also create a friendly facebook group i think the publishing hopefuls has only started in the summer and it already has two thousand people attached to it and it doesn't just have to be for publishers it could be a lockdown support group it can be for fans of dancing on ice it can be anything really for people whose favorite color is yellow you know facebook groups they're not they're not biased so you can do whatever you like on there um, but it's a great way to kind of create a support group of your peers to meet people in that what you're looking for obviously the yellow not so relevant to jobs but in publishing for example you meet your peers you can meet professionals you can meet authors you can meet fellow editors if you make it an editorial specific one you know and they're really easy to set up really easy to promote they're completely free and it's just a community it's just networking is this idea of community building it's developing it's building your address book it's social which is what social media is for believe it or not so i've also mentioned the mentorship scheme you could also create a book club um you don't have to do this necessarily face to face it doesn't have to be on zoom it can be on, on facebook it can be on twitter it could be via a blog it could be via a newsletter it can just be this month's book is the lucky escape by laura jane williams i'm only saying that because i have the um the proof right next to me uh, great book coming out in uh, june <laughs> coming out in june um but you can start a book club because then you're reaching fellow book lovers you are potentially reaching fellow publishers you're probably reaching the authors of those books if you've chosen a book that comes out for example laura you could get in contact with me and then i would then help you to talk to laura you know that sort of thing that's just an example of how network how creating a book club can help you to network so all of these things the reason i wanted to put them on here it's because they're fun elements to start a network. I don't want people to think that you only network when you go to a pub and you have a really expensive warm glass of wine and you stand around like a wallflower waiting for someone to talk to you. That isn't what networking should be. Networking is talking to people one-on-one, -on -one, in a group, online, in person, about things you like, getting to know a person, talking to people within your own ilk, within your own set of skills. You know, networking should be, at the end of the day, meeting people meeting your people effectively so you can start your own network in these any number of ways maybe in the ones i haven't even listed and it should be fun it should be easy and the easier it is the larger your network will grow and the quicker it will grow the harder it is the you know the more you just go to those really rubbish events with the warm glass of wine and uh, the kind of stress look on your face the harder it is to grow your own network because you'll you'll put it off you won't go to those events you'll isolate yourself so yeah think of it as a uh, a fun social project and less of a work networking must go session okay so i've already kind of mentioned these uh, in passing so i won't really read these out but these are just examples of um the, the bi-monthly magazine in the read is a brilliant um, newsletter for anyone interested in publishing from my name mulvey i think the latest one came out today you got the podcast linkedin um i've only really mentioned it in passing but i imagine most of us have it it's one of those um, social media platforms that just suddenly appears one day, like an email account. We all suddenly have an email account. We have no idea when we signed up for one, but there it is. But LinkedIn is a great way because it is a career social platform. So it's a great way to kind of follow people's careers, to DM, to grow your network without actually having to speak to anybody. But obviously, if you don't speak to anybody, but you're friends with them, you're not really friends with them. You just have easier access to them, which is why when you friend someone and they accept it, you should follow up with a dm you should reach out and tell them why you're following you should ask for their advice congratulate them on the job anything like that say happy birthday you know make sure that your your vocal presence is there because i know that when i accept people's linkedin requests if they don't say hello or um, they don't communicate with me in any way then i i have no idea that they're there it's the same for all of us it's why we do facebook calls and twitter calls every couple of years because we, we've completely forgotten who we followed or who we like so uh, but yeah but linkedin a great place to start if you're looking to start with any kind of social platform and are a bit are a bit wary then linkedin definitely a great place to start you've also got like i said the book clubs 
a great way to work with publishing professionals in an actual work capacity. Also something great to put on your CV in a creative industry. And then sign up to services like uh, Tandem Collective and Readers First, which are actually reviewer platforms. Because if you're a reviewer, if you have a side hustle, that's again a great way to network with fellow reviewers, uh, publishing professionals and also agencies to kind of get an insight of all of the people that work in the periphery of publishing. Because it's not, as I said, all the people that work in the publishers. You've also got um, you've also got literary scouts, people that travel the world. You've got the agencies that kind of help out on the side. You've got the lawyers, the legal teams. You know, there's there's so many people that work to get books together. You've got the authors. I mean, that's an obvious one. Um, it's not just publishers. So think of that and keep it as large a network as possible. But yeah, so guys, that's actually the end of the presentation portion. It was quite a long one today. I did say it was going to be 45 minutes and I think it's spot on, in fact. Uh, so now I'm going to be taking questions. Oh, it does. I love that Meg just put, I love networking. Does it make me weird? It doesn't. It doesn't at all make you weird. I'm just as a very, when I first came to publishing, I was extremely introverted, extremely nervous, very shy. And uh, I, I was never very good at that kind of social element. So um, yes, but it doesn't make you weird. I think it actually makes you very good candidate for any kind of creative industry something you can work on okay Sarah says I'm currently looking oh sorry my screen just jumped currently looking for a publishing agent is that the best way to go I hear you shouldn't contact publishers directly um some publishers have open submissions uh, so Avon for example we do we don't currently because they're closed for a competition um but Avon do I believe HQ do Mills and Boone I'm just thinking HarperCollins but um, I think Canelo my old company a lot of independent publishers but for the most part because an agent is um, not just for getting you a book deal, but also for negotiating or money, um, negotiating rights, selling your book abroad. I think it's still very important to get a, an agent. So I would query agents first. They'll also be your kind of first point of contact um, with regards to your manuscript. So they can give you insights and editorial notes and things like that. So definitely I go for agents first. So what are some areas, questions to avoid asking when networking? I think the general rule of thumb here is to avoid politics um, and inflammatory kind of conversation starters or conversation moments, just because everyone has an opinion and uh, everyone's entitled to an opinion, but that can sour networking very quickly. So just be very careful. If it's relevant, then by all means, but if it's not relevant, if you're asking a question for the sake of asking a question, it's, it's, it's a very um, thin, thin line to walk, uh, particularly when you're just starting out or networking as a new person in industry. So that's kind of avoid politics, avoid uh, kind of any inflammatory areas such as that. I mean, I'm just thinking politics because of Brexit right now but, um, and lockdown in general, but I'm sure there are many others. But yeah, apart from that, it's kind of a free for all, but always focus on positive things. So don't say, oh, the weather is rubbish today, or I really, I read this awful book. You know, focus on, I read this amazing book, or um, if the weather is rubbish, it's like, I'm so glad I had an umbrella. <laughs> you know, kind of uplifting. Be happy, be jolly. Everyone wants to smile. So do that. So Meggie recently found her mentor thanks to Ains Instagram advice. That's brilliant. You found it intimidating to ask. It is, I think asking for someone to mentor you, it is quite intimidating, which is why, again, I go through schemes because the schemes, it's kind of, it's inviting people to ask, um, which makes it a lot easier for the mentee as well as the mentor to kind of organise. But you don't have to go all out and just introduce yourself to, I don't know, Adamant, um, which is picking a random name who happens to be an 80s pop star, um, and go up to Adamant and say, hi, uh, you've never met me, will you be my mentor? You should start a conversation first and see if you like them, for one thing. You might not like the person that you think would be a great mentor, um, or you might not gel in a way. It might not even be likability. It might just be they focus on data and analytics and you, you're a more creative person. So... You kind of get to know them first, uh, general chatter. Maybe if you could, it, I'd say meet up for a, a cup of coffee and then address it when face to face. Um, but otherwise, start a conversation, get to know them first and then kind of broach the topic gradually. And, uh, you know, I'm looking for a mentor or, or I'd love to develop my skills and uh, you're a professional in this or you're brilliant at this or, you know, or how did you do, you know, asking someone how did you do this is a great way into asking to be a mentor. 
So Fiona said she's currently trying to find experience, uh, work experience in publishing, particularly editorial and literary agent related, but open to anything, to be honest. Do you have any advice or know of anyone offering this at the moment? It is COVID is making it very difficult. Um, yeah, I mean, that's the main reason I started my workshops, actually, was to offer insight and to offer upskilling to uh, publishing hopefuls right now because of the current situation we find ourselves in. Uh, work experience and internships are still very thin on the ground. I think a lot more publishers are starting to reintroduce their schemes, their graduate schemes, mentorship schemes, they're just their schemes in general. Um, with regards to literary agency, I actually, that's how I started in publishing. I was an intern at a literary agency. And then when I was um, up, you know, they let me go. Um, they said, could you carry on doing the reading for us? Could you still, you know, read through our slush pile? So sometimes reaching out to an agent, particularly if that's your area you want to get into and offering to read their submissions for them. I admit I didn't, I wasn't paid. You should be paid. I'm, I'm not saying walk into something and, you know, say, oh, don't pay me. But um, it's a really hard one to kind of say, yeah, you should always be paid. But if you really, really want in, uh, experience and that's something you're happy to do, in your own time without any kind of time constraints without pay or for a small fee then you can do that um the other thing really is to talk to publishers one-on-one -on -one, to make sure that you're known in the syp to make sure you're following the little unions like i said like book marketing society if you want to get into marketing make sure you're following pub interns that pub blogger those communities that share the um the latest graduate schemes, the latest jobs, the latest work experience, all of those, make sure you're a part of that community and networking with those peers. But uh, yeah, it's, it's a really tough one at the minute. And I'm mm, reach, if you want to reach out to me personally, Fiona, I'm absolutely happy to help as much as I can. I can talk to um, the editors in my, because uh, I'm in marketing, obviously, so I can talk to the editors and my literary agent and see what kind of is open at the minute. So that's something else. You can always reach out to people in your network already who might not be the best person for the role you're looking for but might know someone else you know so I'm absolutely happy to help with that. Sarah's asking about the best way to go about querying an agent so writers and artists yearbook uh, checking their website looking to see what they're looking for looking to see what they already represent um, and then putting together a query so I've just moved that there you go uh, putting together a query letter without typos um, and just being a make sure your pitch is right as well as in like your um, two sentence elevator pitch because that's that's what an agent is really looking at. So Manira asks, I think networking helps you feel like you'll really belong to the fraternity. Um, yeah, it does. This really helps. So never feel shy about approaching others. Yep. One person spoken to means one more person, you know, in publishing precisely. And it's such a small industry that, you know, you speak to one person, you know, only a thousand more to go. But actually, the more you speak to, you can speak to 20, 30 in an event. You know, now there's only 970 to go, which actually is a much less frightening number. So, um, but yeah, everyone knows everyone in publishing as well, like I said. Lucy's currently looking for a placement for the summer, but making contact and asking for advice from professionals, but not having any luck of getting any conversations about placement opportunities. I do think those conversations are harder at the minute just because I, I, I mean, I work in the industry. I'm always looking out for those sort of things to talk about with you guys in particular, but with uh, to share on my social accounts and even I'm struggling to find them. So those conversations are hard at the minute in general and particularly hard I know for you guys that are looking for them so if they don't have insight into what opportunities are available then then make sure you use their time wisely and ask for other advice or you know talk to them about how they got started and find out their story find out who they're connected to you never know where something will spark off an idea or spark off an opportunity and also like I said starting your own not necessarily a job I know but starting your own um, hustle starting your own networking what's something like club or the newsletter or the magazine all of those things it's a good way to get noticed and to kind of get your foot in the door without having to do the work experience placement first I hope that helps okay what kind of topics do you think we should be ready to talk about for interviews for publishing roles um, always with that I've done a full video about job interviews so definitely go check that out um, but make sure you know what books the company you're interviewing for publish because they will want to talk about it um, they don't want to talk about classics unless you're going to vintage you know penguin because we don't publish classics we publish you know publishers don't tend to publish classics unless they're a classical publisher um, so they'll, they'll want to know more about what's currently out they'll want to know about new books um, so try and read the latest popular read or the latest read within that genre that the role you're going for would publish um, so yes definitely do that 
In terms of other things I'll talk about, they'll want to talk about strengths, they'll want to talk about weaknesses. So practice answering those questions in the mirror. Practice will decide what your strengths and weaknesses are um, and what the best ones are for that role and really go over your, um, uh, the, what's it word? It's not the cover letter. Like the job blurb, I've forgotten what it's called, but the, the job description, there you go. Um, go over the job description because everything you need to know is in that job description, I promise you. Um, but yeah, but do check out the previous video because I go into more detail about interviews in that one. Okay. Um, Francesca, currently work as a freelance book designer. Amazing. I have so much respect for designers. Um, find it hard getting, finding it hard to get work in COVID. Um, could the COVID be... I've been working on it for years, struggling to understand how it really works. Um, and there's no posted jobs, no advantage, anything. Yeah, so with designers, I only know a little with designers because, again, it's not really my area of publishing, but um, I do work with the same designers again and again. We are always hoping for fresh blood, but we always get approached rather than asking for people to approach us. So never be afraid to kind of email marketing professionals, uh, to email a production, com uh, to production area, a marketing agency even, Tandem Collective, um, you know, all these people that kind of run events because as much as you're a freelance book designer, you're also, you, you have an eye for things that they can use um, in the publishing industry, but also self-published authors, uh, agencies, sometimes a literary agency, sometimes they'll take on a freelance book designer, I think on occasion. Um, but yeah, but really utilize it and really utilize your platform, probably Instagram in your case, in terms of visual visuals and tag publishers in it and, you know, be shameless in self-promotion, I think. And to us, that's kind of the same with networking, kind of be shameless about your self-promotion. Got about five minutes left, guys. So I'm going to rattle through these. There's so many. Uh, Caitlin said, for those just starting out, is it recommended to obtain an MA in publishing or a publishing equivalent, or is it possible to make it without that added degree? It is entirely possible to make it without a degree. I think at the minute, a lot of people are going back to kind of the degree, um, thinking they need one, because it's that much harder, given the situation we're in, to get work experience, to get on a grad scheme, to get on a, a work placement. So getting an MA kind of keeps you in the, the sphere of publishing. Um, and kind of adds that experience to your CV without the need for a work experience placement. So I have nothing against them at all. I think if you want to do one, by all means do it. I do think they're brilliant in that respect. But if you don't want to do it, if you're only doing it because you feel like you have to, that's when I question whether or not you'll get the most out of it. Um, and that's when I say try a side hustle or do something you want to do because first comes heart, then comes hustle. And it's kind of the same with a degree. If you don't enjoy your degree or don't want to do your degree before you do it, you're really not going to get the most out of it. Uh, and you could have been doing something you wanted to do, which you really got something out of in that time instead. But, um, but yeah, it's not necessary to have a degree, uh, but it's still absolutely fine to have one. I still think it does give you um, not an extra push or an extra kind of stepping stone, but it will give you extra insights, which I think is useful when it comes to interviewing, to developing skills and meeting people. Okay. Uh, Zoe Redwood, uh, she was assigned a mentor once, but really dropped the ball because I wasn't sure how to approach it. I have had this, um, when I first got a mentor, I only met her twice in the entire year she was my mentor. So when, with regards to being a mentee, as well as being a mentor, there are kind of things. So with regards to being a mentee, make sure that you're staying in touch with them. Make sure that whenever you finish uh, a meeting, you always schedule the next one. Never ever leave it as like, oh, okay, I'll see you in a few weeks. We'll, we'll chat in a few weeks. No, always make sure you schedule the next chats. Uh, also, maybe talk to them before the chat as well to kind of like an assign an agenda. Um, so with my mentee, uh, in particular the current one, we always say, I always say to her, what do you want to learn about? in the next session so I can make it as relevant as possible to you. We only have an hour, it's our lunch break. Um, so what do you wanna get out of this session? So making sure if your mentor doesn't ask you that, make sure you tell them that um, and make sure you kind of keep to that. And then with, like I said, with the mentor, it's kind of the same rules apply. Make sure you always schedule the next one. Make sure you always have some form of agenda, even if it's just, oh, I want to go over ads today. That's still, that's better than, oh, what do you wanna do? Oh, I don't know. You know, always give some sort of indication of what you want to do. Ah, wrapping up time um but yeah but and then stay in touch reach out via uh, social media shameless make sure if they're not getting back to you and you're on a scheme talk to the um creators of the scheme the runners of the scheme they'll be able to help where do you see yourself in five years is the worst question ever that's an interview question i, I refuse to answer 
by by refusing I change it someone says where do you see yourself in five years well I'll tell you where I can see myself in five months I see myself killing it in this job mic drop that's literally what I say uh, so yes love any tips on how I have those, definitely me who might find the prospect of networking and constantly being switched on a little overwhelming yeah in which case if you ever find networking overwhelming don't feel like you need to do it every day because you really don't um, if you always say to yourself I need to talk to one person at an event I want to go to one event a month and I will, you know, follow up with someone. You know, I always think one thing a month is absolutely fine. And it doesn't even have to be an event. It can just be on Twitter. You know, someone could say, oh, I really want to talk to Ellie this month. Or oh, it's so-and-so's birthday this month. So I'll message them. You know, that's still, that's networking. So, but I always think if you set yourself a goal or a rule, it kind of helps you keep that structure. So like I said, if you haven't already, I think this is going to have to wrap it up now, guys, because I know everyone wants their dinner. If you haven't already, definitely go check other people out on the, uh, the chat. Make sure you follow each other. And I will speak to you guys very soon. Thank you all so much for coming. And like I said, I will follow you momentarily. I will be on Twitter and Instagram after this. So if you want to chat at all, please let me know. Like I said, DMs are always open. I'm always around to chat. If I don't have time to do something, I will let you know. I will be honest. And if I haven't replied to you for whatever reason, maybe it's gone into spam. Maybe I fell asleep on my phone. I did that the other day. Um, then chase me up. You know, make sure you follow up with somebody. Okay. But thank you so, so much. And I hope everyone has a lovely evening. And uh, stay safe. Just stop sharing this now. I'll speak to you guys later. Bye, everyone.